everybody. Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda, and this is Jim. Hi, Paul. He's the one that's working the horses today. We're headed up to the woods today with Lady and Bill, and we're going to get a load of logs that Jim has previously cut. The, the horses are going to skid them out uh, to a wagon, and then we're going to bring them home on the wagon. And they are going to be used, uh, they're going to be sawed up and used to, whoops, he's not even waiting for me. I better get out of the way. They're going to be used to make more barn boards for the uh, building project we've had uh, going on that you may have seen before. So come on along with us today. Good down, excited. Yeah, I can see that. I'm waiting for him to slobber. Here to go. You want a drink, lady? One last sip? No? So this woodlot is about two miles or so from our house. It's property we, that we own, but it's not connected to our main farm here. So Jim over the years has spent a lot of time going back and forth with the horses and a wagon to go up and get a load of logs. And he's done a lot of logging up there. It's quite a large woodlot. And so it's, it's been kind of quite convenient for us to have this close by for a lot of reasons, but for the things like um, him being able to go up just, and just cut the logs ahead of time and then come back with the horses sometimes, just depending on how much time he has, it makes it quite convenient. He's got his chainsaw, his hard hat, and the things he needs. So what I was saying is that it, it's nice that he can, if he has a little bit of time, he can just run up there and cut the logs and get them ready. And then when he has another little spot of time, he could take the horses up and get the logs. It gives them exercise and it's just good for them and it, it just works out well. If you haven't seen it before, this is his wagon that he Calls the logs with. Hey. Bye -bye. And I'm coming along. Catch up. Jim just remembered he had to get something out of the truck. So he, he handed me the reins. And I'm very pleased that Neither of them has even moved one step. That's very refreshing to me. They're usually really good. I don't, I'm just always amazed how well they stand. Now they're ready to go. They know he yeah. was coming back. Forgot my tape. Oh. I got a tape measure, I think, up in the skids there, so I would have been all right. But. Well, our leaves are falling. We still have some color in our trees, but the leaves are falling. And I always like to see the leaves on the ground while they're still colored, that they're pretty. But soon they will turn brown. Should 
would be still a pretty, Lady. pretty ride today. They're gonna do a little jogging. Think you're gonna stay warm today? Yeah, I do have a long jog on. First time. I don't. I've got this new coat from Revelo Revelation. Race. race. Just like mine. Yep, just like yours that they sent and um, I'm trying that out today. So far I love it and if we get a few drops of rain I think I'm going to be okay. But it's very nicely made and so far I'm really enjoying it. stop at the stop sign. Thanks. We're entering the road to our woodlot. We do have a lot of different varieties of trees up here because the person that owned this land before us, him and his father planted a lot of trees up here. So there are some different varieties. So um, Jim knows trees by the bark and it's kind of an ongoing joke in our family, especially since Levi's really good at telling all the different barks apart and he's teaching his Le kids it Levi's too. our son. Yeah, Levi's our son. Anyways, um, he's teaching his kids, they're, and you know, they're little, our grandkids, but they're pretty good already at telling different bark species. But I, I like to stick by leaves, but leaves aren't always here. And that's why Jim always goes by bark, right, Jim? Yep, because you can't tell a leaf in the middle of the wintertime. Right. So, anyways, I thought it might be cool this afternoon just to show you um, some leaves and see what, you know, you can put in the comments if you know what kind of leaves they are. So, maybe we'll do that today. That might be kind of fun. I don't know how different leaves are in different places, but I'm just going to do a, a few of the common leaves because that's all I know. <laughs> For one, I'm very glad I get to be here this afternoon. It might be a little chilly out, but how lovely is this that I get to ride through the woods on this lovely afternoon with my husband and the horses. So I basically just followed Jim around a circle, but now they're turned around and headed with the wagon out when we're ready to leave. Got to pick up, get the logs over here so we can load them up.
Time to hook up to the logging cart. <laughs> Jim's got slobber on his back. So what are you doing? Two, two instead of three? Three instead of four. Oh, I thought it was on three. Before. I didn't count that first thing as one. So why are you deciding to do this differently? Well, I want them as tight as I can. I want them very tight. It takes, the tighter it is, the more it takes the weight. The tighter it is, the more it takes the weight off their necks. Okay, I'll get my hard hat. So these are red pine trees, right Jim? Yep. Not my fave. They're heavy. The, the um, lumber is heavy when you're sawing it out. I guess that's good. But anyways, we're once again, we're making these into barns for the barns. Bor boards for the side of the barn. Sizing it up, guys. Ladies like... Oh, you guys, bad boys and girls. Okay, so here's the first, here's the first leave. What have we got here? Hon, these guys are being bad. They're probably glad to get back to the woods so they can chew on some trees. How long are you making these logs? So, uh, these are all 10 footers right here because that's what I need for board and batten, one by eight. And since, since this tree is on that side of that tree there, I'm gonna cut it right here and leave that piece. I'll grab it with something else along through there. And mm -hmm. I'll just take this here. Okay. But I'm going to I marked it with a chalk, blue crayon, and, but I'll take my chainsaw and just score it so I know where that mark is when I get to the landing. Jeez Louise. Seriously, you're, oh. horses are running away. You're not wearing your chaps. Just, uh, so, you know, you've seen most of my horses mine pretty good and behave, and, but I haven't used these two for a little while. So, as you can just see, they're not always perfect. And they're not being very perfect. Not.
Oh, Jim said there weren't any of these trees up this far, but here's some leaves. What kind of leaves are these? Apparently the turkeys have been up here. We're getting tied now, guys. Not to too much, but they are getting tied. What kind of chainsaw do you run? Chainsaw, what kind? Huh? What kind of chainsaw is that? Husqvarna, 372 here. Gives the horses a little break while he cuts them up and loads them up. I had somebody the other day give me a, with a comment and wondered why I was driving with my lines. My left hand was just holding the rain, lines like this, and my right hand, I had it between those two fingers. And that's mostly just a habit I have, and I've done that for forever. Um, I go back and forth. But the one reason why I do it that way is because when I'm, I've got extra lines like this, now I tie a knot in my lines for several reasons, but that's another story. But um, if I got a lot of lines like this, I like to hold the extra lines in my right hand. And then instead of just having that line along with it too, by putting it between those two fingers, it separates that line from the rest of these lines. That's why I don't do it with this side because I, I never carry or hardly ever carry my lines over here. I'm right-handed, so I don't generally do this. They're just always over on this hand here. And so that's why I put them through my first finger, my finger and my thumb. And then the driving line goes through my next two fingers like that to keep them separate. And that way, if I want to slide my hand up on that line, 
it's not affected by these lines that are in this hand. So um, I hope that explains good how, how and why I do that. Um, so it doesn't have to be done that way, but that's just the way I've done it for forever and ever. I capped up. I wanted to just explain one thing here. Because these horses haven't been worked for quite a while, and I don't want to um, overdo it with them going down with this load to the, to the home place, um, I have just these 10 footers, I've kept them just in a single row. I haven't doubled them up. A lot of times I will actually double them. I'll put one up there and one back here, so it's going to, they double. But uh, if I do that, I tend to make too big of a load for them, or would be making too big a load for them. Being them, they're not in great shape, and this just um, keeps me in check and, and doesn't uh, allow me to overdo it. So um, we'll just get a few more logs and we'll call it a load. with Jim. Hope you enjoyed the video. Just wanted to remind you we do still have some calendars for sale. We just got a new shipment. We sold our first lot and we have some more in stock. We also have t-shirts if you're interested. Thanks for watching.